Hey brother, I'm Sven Masterson, co-founder of Mentoring Men. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you about what to do next when a woman says she's not interested in working on the marriage and you are. This happens more often than not. In fact, men reach out to us all the time saying, my wife doesn't wanna work on the marriage. What should I do? What do I do when she's not interested in trying to make things better? And so it can be a really confusing time when you as the man want to hold on to the relationship, the family, the marriage, the life that you have worked so hard to create. As a husband of 28 years and a father of six, I totally get it. I totally know what it's like to face the dissolution and destruction of everything that we as men spend decades building. And so I wanna give you some insight into what to be thinking differently in this moment when your marriage looks like it's on the brink of destruction and your partner has no interest in trying to work to make that work out. Is there any hope? Can this turn around? How can it turn around if she doesn't do any work? And see, this is the fundamental anxiety a man has in this moment is he cannot picture that things could come to a good conclusion unless they work together to make it work. That's actually a kind of common public doctrine when it comes to relationships. And it's not actually true. <clears throat> if you do some searching around for the Gottman Institute, who are considered like foremost experts on, on marriage and uh, difficult marriages and conflict, they'll easily confirm that the most important thing in recovering a fractured marriage is what the man does and thinks. And so that's why we as an organization exist to help men because we routinely discover that if we help a man upright himself, in turn, it generally, but generally, not always, will have great impact on his failing marriage. And in most cases, and, and, and that really is true, the majority of the men we work with, if they can get their head around these things, and if they find us early enough, generally will repair their marriages. But to do that, they really need an entirely new way of thinking. The first thing they have to do is recognize that when, he, when we invite a woman to work on the marriage, we are euphemistically saying, honey, I want you to work on you. Now, I'm not saying this is a conscious thing, but that when we invite somebody to work on something, we're asking them to share the responsibility and power over how that thing turns out. And modern uh, I guess you could say cultural philosophy has given us this idea that it, marriage is a 50-50 effort and that is complete and utter rubbish. Marriage, it turns out, is actually a 100%, 100% effort. And it's this idea that we each bring our half into the marriage and have to equally contribute that to make it work that is actually undermining the marriage because that causes a husband and wife to start ledger keeping hey, you didn't give your portion. I gave my portion. I'm giving more than you. And it creates this context where you start to judge one another and you start to hold each other in, in contempt and resentment and you get frustration and you get anger and you get hostility and it erodes the, the connection that you have as a couple. And it's all based on this idea that we are each co-creating by, by participating in half of a common thing we call marriage. But here's the deal, brother. If you want a change in your life, and that change is not in you, it's in other people. There is no entity called marriage. And I know I, I piss a lot of people off saying this because of this commonly held idea that there's a third entity. In fact, a lot of men in my community still like to hang on to that idea. And I don't reject their perspective. I just don't find it effective to think that there's a third entity that lives unto itself. There's me, a being, a human being called Sven, and there's this being that's a human being called Zelda. And our marriage is only as good as what happens in me and what happens in her. And so when our marriage is on the brink and was for many years, the issue was I lacked fullness. I lacked um, integrity in some things. I lacked a lot of stuff. And so I wasn't living my best. And yet I wanted something. In this case, I wanted connection and intimacy and a thriving marriage. Now, if I didn't see that as possible in me, I fundamentally then am reliant and dependent upon her to bring that about. 
And this is where we go wrong because that creates a dependency on the other person to kick in their portion, their allotment. And you end up living in this story that looks a little bit like this, right? There's me, there's my wife, and here. What are you giving to this thing called the marriage? And so when men are frustrated and they don't like the way the marriage is going, they say, honey, we need to work on the marriage. Now, if that man meant himself and he was honest with himself, why wouldn't he just go work on his marriage? No, he's not. He actually says we, but he means she. And this is what gets us into trouble. We want her to fix it. We want her to basically correct what's missing. And a woman feels this and she deeply resents it. And it does not actually create anything positive in the relationship generally, but it creates friction and resentment because the expectation she feels is that it's my fault and therefore I have to fix it. So I want to tell you about a new way to think about marriage that maybe you're not familiar with. And that is looking at it more like you would a Venn diagram, okay? There's me or you and there's her. I like to say me and she. And the space in between where we overlap is the we space. And what I learned and discovered in repairing my own marriage and helping hundreds of men do the same is that the, the we space is only as good as the me space. And when a woman says she's not interested in working in that we space, it's really okay because you can always, always improve your me space. And when you improve your me space and you grow and, and expand and this circle gets bigger, you have more to offer to this shared commonality overlap of two lives. And that's how you improve your marriage. Because let's say this inside of this circle called me, there's anger and contempt and bitterness and resentment and frustration. And my overall temperature as a man is kind of chilly. I kind of feel hostile. I look angry all the time to my wife. What I'm actually creating in here is not very pleasant and lovely. And so if I change the nature of what happens inside that circle from contempt, anger, resentment, frustration, judgment, blame, hostility, ledger keeping, conditional regard, and I change that to warmth, acceptance, appreciation, kindness, high regard, and I change what's happening in here, she can't not be impacted. Now, that doesn't mean it fixes the marriage. It means that I start to offer the best of myself by improving me to the we space. And so I'm naturally improving the we space. Now, you've heard me in other videos, perhaps, or articles talk about physics, right? In the universe, we have this thing called the second law of thermodynamics. And that says if you have two objects in proximity to each other, uh, and even great distances, really, the one that has the most heat will radiate that heat and it will warm up the other object and they reach equilibrium. This is the law of physics. And so as parts of the universe, it's not like the universe works differently in this part and this part and this part. This is why phys physicists like this idea of a unified theory. And so I think that's wise to say if this pattern exists in the universe, might it also exist in the smaller parts of the universe. And so if I can consider myself to have a temperature, can I, as if I get warmer than the other thing in the relationship or nearby, in this case, my wife, will it actually change anything? And what we see routinely is when a man elevates his internal temperature, he goes from chilly and cold and hostile to warm and loving appreciating, accepting, no longer blaming, no longer judging. What ends up happening is a beautiful thing is that she warms up too, right? It's, this, it's the second law of thermodynamics happening in a relationship sense. Now, I hope that's not too nerdy and geeky for you if you're not a science person, but I just want to give you some basis that it, for having a rational um, appreciation that when I change me, we have the pattern in the universe that it changes positively or it impacts or affects others, but in a way that is meaningful. And so when a man comes to us and says, my wife doesn't work on the relationship, we point him to this truth. We point him to the truth 
that if you break away from the idea that the only way to have the life you want is some sort of 50-50 contribution, and instead you own yourself thoroughly, you improve yourself to 100%. That means you become a man that's full and whole, who doesn't feel like everything he needs and wants is outside of himself. He doesn't place the responsibility for what he wants on her, and he starts to take ownership of those things in his life. What that man will find is his temperature elevates. It generally Im improves the relationship of his partner, even if she's angry, even if she's asked for space, even if she's asked for separation and divorce, it generally still improves the relationship. Now, does it always fix it? Again, no. If we help a man at the right time, it, it has a very, very favorable chance of producing exactly that. So I hope I've created some curiosity in your heart and mind by this video. I realize there might be questions about this kind of concept, this idea, and so I have an offer for you. If you want to speak in person about these things, we offer completely free complimentary consultations to men going through this, this kind of crisis. I want you to look down below this video, look for a link that says something about a free session. You can fill out a form. We're not gonna spam you. We don't send you invites to this or that. We're, we're not gonna give you a sales pitch. We're gonna set up a Zoom call with you and we're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about what's going on with you and we'll unpack these truths further. You'll, you'll be pressured in no way. You don't have to provide a credit card and it's just an easy peasy process. If that appeals to you, if you wanna know more, I just ask that you go ahead, scroll down, click that, that link, fill out that form, and then we can talk face to face. Thanks for listening. I appreciate you watching this video. If it meant something positive to you, I would love it if you would give us a like. If you like videos like this, if you'd subscribe, that'd be really meaningful. And of course, we would love to have comments on videos like this. It helps our message get out in front of a lot of struggling men and women. And hopefully by, by some great act, we can help men and women and families all around the world to avoid some of the unfortunate tragedies of families dissolving when sometimes it just takes a little bit of a new perspective. All right. Nice to be with you. Take care.